How are you doing, Ruby? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good, thanks. Did you watch a game last night? Yes, I did. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Isn't it? I just think these games they should be on Saturdays. These hangovers are not good for Mondays, but anyway, I say. Oh uh, well, I you know, I did a sober Sally last night. I didn't drink. <laughs> um, so I'm going to begin. I really enjoyed uh, the movie. I mean, I, I think it was such a sort of unique an entry into such a fantastic story. Um, I'm just wondering about for you the kind of process of making an animation. I mean, uh, is that some, you know how how was that kind of experience for you? I know a lot of actors kind of quite enjoy that, but is it quite isolating? Were you able to meet your co-stars? What was that whole experience? like for you on this occasion yeah I mean I got to obviously met Ari and then I met like Emily who plays Anne and then Ralph who plays like modern day Peter and Sebastian and all the other people like part of the film and I shared Kitty shares like quite a lot of scenes with Anne and then modern day Peter so when we when I did those scenes Ari had us in the recording studio together he'd have us like opposite ends of the recording studio um mm. and you know be be batting back back and forth to have that energy that you would like naturally on a set to bounce off of someone we had that in the recording studio and I met I met everyone you know talked to everyone before so we built up a good rapport and that the we had those like character dynamics but also dynamics within our within ourselves as well I mean, I, I, how was it sort of watching the film back? Because I mean, obviously, it's a very emotional story. And I know some actors sort of say they can't, they struggle to watch something therein because they can see themselves on screen and it can be quite distracting. Is that the same when you do an animation? When you watch it back, do you still hear yourself or are you able to get more kind of immersed in the story like, like I would, for instance? Yeah, I think anything that you're in and you watch back is always going to be like slightly like oh like <laughs> you're always thinking oh I could have done this differently or said said it in a different way you know it's exactly the same when you watch an animation as well well I I felt it was just I was like oh like you know I could have I could have said this differently or had a bit more excitement on this line but actually throughout the film like you said because you're not seeing yourself on screen um you're not seeing your face I did I got lost in other people's performances and um the seeing an animation when you're on set you see the world around you but because when we were recording you know Ari Ari Fong the director he had pencils and imaginations and first drafts of what each character and parts of the world looked like but you know we weren't watching it on on screen and recording to a visual um so seeing it for the first time was really exciting I got lost in this like huge like powerful uh, animation and, and the spectacle on screen mm. How was it sort of playing Kitty and finding the right voice for the character? Because it's the one character really in this that has this kind of freedom to be whatever you want it to be. Because obviously it's sort of steeped in historical accuracies as well, this animation. So characters are from certain places, but you're playing a kind of imaginary fantasy character to some degree. So was that did that give you the kind of freedom to find your own route into, into finding her right sort of sound? Yeah, I mean, growing up, like you watch so many so many cartoons and animation features and you see you know for me you realize how important it is how unique a voice is because you're able to immediately identify a character by their voice but like you said you know kitty although she is she is an imaginative character she's you know parts of Anne and also you know parts of real people that that Anne adored as well and, and looked up to so it was important that you know she she felt nuanced in being like a real a real human um and I, I listened to like Emily Carey who plays Anne and kind of her rhythm and how she how her Anne was and how she spoke and I took on I was inspired by that and took that on and then like worked with Ari and finding the voice of Kitty and what sort of research were you able to do? I mean, obviously, in the world of Anne Frank, there's so much to be done. I mean, you can go to the museum, you can read the original diaries. Did you, what sort of, what did you do to help prepare for this? Or had you already sort of done that? Because I know I went to the museum when I was about sort of 12 years old or something. I just wondered if you, what your experience was with the kind of story of Anne Frank going into this project. Well, I read the diary when I was like, you know, about like 10, 11, but also before we started filming, obviously, I read Anne Frank's diary again. And, you know, you research more on the, the time and, uh, Ari had access to kind of, you know, uh, the the archives that other people, you know, haven't had when in in the past. Also, the story is largely based off of Otto Frank's, um, like Otto Frank's book, and also what he he you know he's talked about Anne going on the train as well. So I like looked into parts of like Otto Frank's book, but also the people that Anne says that Kitty is like, you know, I researched them um, and 
kind of speaking pardon me <clears throat> i've got a frog in my throat um speaking to ari and having a constant conversation with him was really important in terms of like i said finding the feet of the character and the story as well prior like in after having done my own my own research mm -hmm. and what, what i mean what do you think it is about this story that's just become such a powerful piece of literature i mean it's a kind of it's a very moving upsetting story to read but it's become this kind of essential piece of reading that has given us this window isn't it into this kind of part of history that uh through the kind of eyes of, of a young and innocent child i mean yeah what, what what do you think it is about this story yeah that just allows for it to still be in you know 2022 told again and still be and capture the imaginations of of audiences still to today yeah i mean i think i think the fact that you know it's when you read something like anne frank's diary it's in it's telling this you know abhorrent and tragic story in the face of a child and a, a young adult um and i think how she is so fiercely loyal to growing up and experiencing those universal feelings of of love and heartbreak for the first time that you do when you're a, a young adult um is what keeps people constantly uh interested in retelling her story and you know to, you know telling the truth about you know her her life and her family's life as well you know she she is an extremely powerful young woman her her words are extraordinary so i think you're constantly in awe of her her bravery but also her as a young adult you know how mm. like i said how, how how loyal she is to just experiencing those feelings that everyone does when they're growing up despite her situation yeah, and it's thought of, the film still feels so relevant. Her story is so relevant still today. But like you said, it has been told uh, this story before. What do you think it is about this retelling that is different to, to other sort of iterations we've seen of, of that of that story? Well, Ari draws, you know, on in the film, Ari Ari film, the director, he draws on the the parallels between past and present. You know, he's he's con throughout the film, he's constantly reframing the past, re re examining it, and like interrogating the present as it is now you know at the end he has his title card that says like there you know there are still millions of children the the, the film like i said it, it is about young adults and it is about how important children are and children's voices um you know like the the refugee that kitty and peter come across like ava you know she's she shows how crucial like children are um it says at the end like there are still millions of children fleeing war zones and um, are in war zones today. So I think, you know, that's what makes the story different is how it draws on the parallels of past and present. And looking back to sort of other stuff you, you've done, I mean, obviously, I wanted to ask quickly about Bridgerton because it's such a, a show that I'm, I'm sure, you know, you're so sort of uh, entwined with. Uh, how much of your career do you think you're sort of always going to look back and owe to Bridgerton? It must be such a shame not to be continue to continue on with that role. I'm just wondering, are you quite philosophical about the whole thing? I suppose you can't you can't do everything. <laughs> oh, no. Um, you know, working on Bridgerton was incredible. Everyone, cast and crew, you know, like hilariously joyous uh, and I had such a such a brilliant time on it I think every project I'm a part of you know I give equal amounts of myself to so I'd hope that like every part of you know my career thus far and in the future it will um be an ode to like you know how hard I I have worked and with other people as well and sort of looking ahead, of course, uh, Lockwood and Co is something we're so excited about. It's a huge role and Joe Cornish behind it. Uh, so needless to say, we're all very excited. How was that? It must have been such a great character to have got your team into. You must be so excited about sharing it with, with the world. Yeah, I mean, it was it was incredible fun. Like we shot over like a course of, I think about nine to ten months. You know, they're like one hour um eight part series it's I got to learn how to sword fight how to use like all sorts of weapons I got to train I I got to do so much stuff that you know I never could have imagined doing um and Joe and the whole team at Complete Fiction are, are brilliant fun and all the directors who are on board with it as well um so I'm really excited for, for everyone to see that yeah, as, as great as it must be making animation, you don't get to learn a sword fight doing an animation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every, everything, everything's different. You know, I got to experience like like what it's like to work in animation and create a voice for someone, a unique identity for someone um, in a different way that I would on set. You know, as is, is I got to, you know, learn to sword fight like, you know, the, the following couple of years. So there's there's everything is really exciting. Yeah, it's a fun old career. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time today and best of luck with the release of the movie. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching...
Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!